Happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday. Welcome to a new episode of the Social Media Scene. This is take two. If you miss take one, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it at all. <laughs> so, what is the rundown for today? Today, we got to talk about Instagram. Instagram loves the kids, and they love the kids so much, they are putting in a new setting so that teens can be protected from some of that crazy stuff that happens on social media. Parents, you know exactly what I am talking about. Also today, some TikTok news you as a small business owner can use. Mm -hmm. But those of you that are exploring TikTok, TikTok is going to throw you a big party and I'll tell you how to attend. And yes, it's free because I know you were thinking it. It's free. Mm -hmm. Now for YouTubers, YouTubers, holla at your girl a minute. You now have an extra opportunity to monetize your videos, mm -hmm. your uploaded videos. Nope, I'm not talking about Google AdSense either. This is something new for uploaded videos. And today I got a special guest. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you'll meet her in just a second. So don't go anywhere. I will be right back. Happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday. How is everybody doing? Welcome to a new episode of the social media scene. I am still <laughs> Alice Fuller, principal consultant at Sheer Social. I know you're like, why would she say that? This is take two. For some reason, the internet doesn't like me today. Now internet, I'm, let, let me holler at you a minute, okay? Internet, I need you to work. And yes, I said internet. That's two ends. <laughs> internet, I need you to work with me, not against me. Okay, so just, just, just get me through the next couple of minutes, and we'll be good. Okay. So, if you missed the top of the show, again, I am Alice Fuller, principal consultant at Sheer Social. Now, what in the world is Sheer Social? That is my social media marketing and training business. And yes, I do some social media management. Yeah, I still do that too. Now what this is here, what's this here? This is the social media scene. This is where week to week I tell you or share with you what is going on in the world of social media week to week. Now I can't share every blessed thing because everything ain't even relevant. But I try to share with you what is going on in social as it relates to how you use it for business, especially if you're a small business owner, and some fun. And I try to add a little entertainment flavor, a little television, a little film, which is the backdrop. Because in a minute, people, it's all going to be media. And today, I got a special guest. Yes, 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 yes. I'm happy about that because I like talking to people, usually. <laughs> so, uh, Miss Cody, go ahead and introduce yourself to the people while I push some buttons, please. Yes. Hello, people. Uh, name is Cody. I am located on the West Coast, San Diego, specifically. Mm -hmm. I am a social media specialist, strategist, manager, whatever you want to call it these days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so many names I don't even know at this point. Uh, I, I manage social media, I strategize, and uh, I've been in the industry for about seven years, starting out in an agency. I now work in higher education, managing admissions channels for local university here, and I also freelance. So I have background in a variety of industries from B2B, I've managed accounts for public figures. So uh, I have a good understanding of social media and I love talking about it, so I'm happy to be here. Uh, remind the people how we met. Yeah, so we met on Twitter, one of my favorite platforms, mm -hmm. and I believe it was a Twitter space that we were a part of, and Alice said something that resonated with me, and so I checked out her profile, and I was like, awesome, I like this lady, so I'm going to okay. her. Well, <laughs> that's how we connected. Wonderful. So everybody, welcome Cody. Now... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and jump right in to the topics of the day. We're going to start off 
with the gram because i know a lot of you love the gram goodness mm. gracious i i'm not hating because i know somebody why are you hating on the gram i am not hating on the gram i just side eye the gram <laughs> so let's, <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about what's the news for the gram today now today for those of you that are parents, I want you to move closer to the screen, please. This is this is your time. If you're making that sandwich, I want you to listen carefully. If you have uh, a child 16 and under, 16 and under, and you finally decided to let them be on Instagram, you should know that by default, that profile will now be made private private but here's the thing instagram is gonna let them change it to public if they want to that's <laughs> that's and that's the rub cody what's your two cents on that I, I, it defeats the purpose to be able to switch <laughs> to public if you know if they're a 14 year old getting on instagram and you who knows what they're searching and, and doing on there but if the point is to provide safety and a place for these young kids to be and have fun on social media, mm -hmm. then the option for privacy, there shouldn't be an option really. It should just be private. Um, there's a lot of weirdos, as we know, that <laughs> pretend to be like their kids and they ain't trying to slip in the DM. So I know they're trying to monitor that. However, the option for them to be public, to me, defeats the purpose of this entire change. Um, but again, it's also up to the parents as well, and I'm not here to tell parents what to do, but monitoring what they're following, what they're engaging with on there is really important because, you know, there's there's a lot of nasty and bad things that are on social media. So just monitoring and being being mindful of what they're a part of when you join a platform like Instagram. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing too, which I think is uh, interesting. Let me get your graphic out of here. So when we get down to... Uh, John Brown, mm -hmm. oh, I'm having that kind of day. Uh, when it gets down to, when we start talking about, cause I forgot, I forgot to do this part. <laughs> we start talking about what we're going to do as far as, let me just, you know what people, I'm going to show you my, green, I'm going to show you my green screen. It's, it's, I, everything messed me up at this point because I had everything set up and then the internet dropped. And uh, it is what it T.I. is right now. Hold on. Let me fix my shot real pretty. Because y'all don't really want to see a green screen. You really don't. That's the magic of live stream and the magic of television. Uh, here's me. And here's the background that I've selected. And here's me. Although, the same day. there we go. Now, when it gets down to... Facebook advertising, Facebook ads, mm -hmm. and Cody, I want your two cents on this too. I just told okay. you if you are 16 and under, by default, private. If they're new to Instagram, they're already on Instagram. It's already out. You know, the horse is already out the stall. Mm -hmm. If you are a parent of a uh, of a teenager, 18, below 18, not at 18, but below 18. If you're seeing a lot of ads, Facebook is saying, hey, we're going to change this because we want, you know, to participate too. And so we want to make it safer for teenagers. So businesses will no longer be able to target below 18 years of age by their, uh, by their activity and by their interest. Now mm -hmm. it would just be limited to their age, location, and what uh, I forgot. Gender. What, and gender. So that's still <laughs> a lot that you can do with yeah, with that by itself. So Cody, what's your two cents on that? <laughs> I mean, we know that these platforms need to make money somehow. So they're going to find a way to advertise regardless of the limitations there's that's the point they're they're here to make money they're here to capitalize on users regardless of age as we see so 
I mean, I, I I don't really have much to say about it. I just okay. it's it's not surprising to me. It's not it's not surprising that that they're still finding a way to um, target the kids, basically. Yeah. And the same thing with commercials when they show like my my son is four so we watch um you know uh the kid shows and stuff mm-hmm. sesame Street and all that and they still target the kids with the toys and you know the okay. stuff it's the same thing as we see on original ad formatting and all that stuff so it's it's no different well it's it'll be interesting too because some of these products that are that are i targeting teenagers i was just thinking yeah. about the the e the e-cig uh oh yeah yeah companies like that that you know specifically target teenagers they can mm-hmm. still target teenagers because they can still do their age they can still do their gender yeah, and their yeah. location yeah so, yeah so facebook you ain't stopping nothing no and i'm not surprised by facebook the way no. they move I, i'm not, not <laughs> so not even. no not even yeah okay. yeah so that is the news of the day as far as Facebook is concerned. Now let's move on over to the tick and talk because I know a lot of you are now beginning to explore all the wonderfulness <laughs> that is TikTok. And it's understandable. Um, mm-hmm. really? I get there, it. Yeah, there is so much buzz around TikTok right now and i get it um and when it comes down to the perception and in and, and, and it might be true that okay. right now TikTok is hot because the algorithms are in favor of your content the algorithm unlike facebook mm-hmm. and unlike per se instagram it's allowing more organic traffic that's that's what's popping right now but at the end of the day as a small business owner you might see potential in going over to TikTok. so what TikTok has done is hey we're going to do a big event we know just like everybody else y'all are coming <laughs> uh-huh. y'all are coming the marketers y'all are coming we know you're coming. And here's the thing. TikTok is inviting you to come. Because I say, and I'm saying it now, give it another two years, TikTok and Instagram going to look exactly alike. Yes. I I think we're heading in that direction. <laughs> They're going to look just alike. But here's the thing. So if, if you're a TikTok small business there. owner and you're like, you know what? what is this whole tiktok thing about and is it good for my business is this somewhere i want to be tiktok mm-hmm. is inviting you small business owner to a virtual block party so if you want to attend this tiktok uh block party for small businesses uh just go over here to the website let's see go over here to the website as you can see here it is called, uh, let's zoom in a bit. Go to TikTok small biz block party.com. TikTok hyphen small biz block party.com. And then while you're there, you can find out where and when. Let's just go here, join the party. Uh, we've got an exciting series of virtual small biz block party workshops lined up. Okay, cool. And here you go. So you you uh, you can sign up here, figure out where you are. There's a lot of them here. They start as early as August 5th. I think that's next week. Next week. And then uh, I'm going to hit here, North Carolina. And you see here, TikTok for business. Uh, this is a TikTok small biz block party in C. So I guess they got a, a page for all of these different states. Okay, North Carolina. We're partners across 50 states. Okay, cool. We're partnering with local organizations to host free to host free workshops. Here's the agenda. 
what makes TikTok stand out, how you can create content. Should you get started on TikTok today? And then you'll hear from small business owners as you uh, see there. And then they want you, of course, to spread the word, check your email, download TikTok. And then there's some more information here. Should you attend? A block party is hosted on Zoom. Uh, no, actually, it is not hosted on Zoom. If that's what y'all were thinking, it says here, uh, you will have to um, go to TikTok's own virtual event platform for universe, for you universe or for yo right there. You see that? I've never heard of that before, but okay, trust us. It's way better than Zoom. Uh, you don't need any special software to access the platform but you need to enter your address, your email address, use Chrome, Firefox, or Microsoft Edge. Safari is not compatible, want, want. And can you join on your phone or tablet? It says here the uh, for, for You Universe platform is currently designed for desktop-based web browsers with most mobile support coming in the future. So use Chrome on your Mac or PC. You can attend uh, other block parties if you can't get to the one for your particular city. And the live events will not be recorded, so there will be no replay. No replay. There's no deadline to register. Uh, will there be additional events for small businesses? Uh, there will be other ones they say here. Just get on their email list. Okay, probably. Yes, attendees will get invitations to special training series. Okay. Uh, why do I have to answer questions about my business when I register? Okay, why am I being asked to sign a, a non-disclosure agreement? That's interesting. You're gonna, okay, an NDA. Okay, during the events, we may be sharing some valuable information about TikTok that we don't typically make available to the general public like what <laughs> by checking the non-disclosure box you acknowledge the special access and agree to refrain from recording and or sharing any of the event content with external audiences that's interesting that they would make you sign an nda to attend but there it is folks so if you want to attend, oh, here's a video. Do I have my audio up? Let's see, here's a video. Okay, let's, okay, let's see. Well, there you have it people that's how you can attend the tiktok party for small businesses and yes be expected to sign an nda and give up some information about your small business Are you, are you not on TikTok? Are you Cody? No, I am not on TikTok. I'm sorry. I do too much doom scrolling on Twitter and Instagram and you said doom, scrolling. Scrolling. doom scrolling. That That's the thing they call it, right? You just constant scrolling. I cannot divert my attention to TikTok. I just feel like I would get way too addicted to it and I'd, I'd rather not be on there and it just moves really fast. And I definitely give props to social media managers that manage TikTok and other accounts, but it is, it's not for me. Mm -mm, not My thing too is, you know, it's, it's great for engagement and, and impressions and reach and whatever, but you know, are a lot of these businesses getting business? That's my question. That's always the question. Now, um, 
Because I've read some success stories. I have read success stories. Yeah, I have too. So let's go over here to the TikTok uh, newsroom, as they call it. Let's see mm -hmm. if this will work. Let's just pray this will work. Will this still work? Thank you. How has TikTok saved our business? Here's a brief recap. To our fire in 2019, to you guys helping us rebuild, to my first viral video, to my most viral video. What are they building? Our sales jumped overnight to meeting new friends, creating relationships, which have saved our business. Because of our TikTok community, our business has survived. So thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, the cynic in me. <laughs> uh, I think I know what you're going to say, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the cynic in me says so how much did they break you off for that however i i just here's my thing tiktok is shiny it's shiny right now and everybody wants to be there yep for me if everyone wants to be there i'm like okay do i need to like i need to just i need to think about this before i just join in um because it's a commitment and mm. It's a it's a big commitment. Like I've I've seen conversations on Twitter from other social media managers that they spend hours creating content for TikTok and they get a lot of impressions and a lot of comments and a lot of engagement. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's about the bottom line for a lot of businesses, and that's something to consider. Is it gonna bring in what you need it to bring in? Um I don't know. I'm I'm really indifferent about TikTok. I I I I've had a lot of I've seen a lot of job opportunities where, you know, they want someone to manage their TikTok, their Instagram, their YouTube, their LinkedIn, their Facebook, and I'm thinking, do you need to be everywhere? And do you need to be on TikTok? You have to be on. Is your audience even there, or do you just want to be there? <laughs> because see, that's, it's the shiny thing. <laughs> that's the kind. But see, here's the thing too, because when you look at all the social media headlines, TikTok, mm -hmm. TikTok. I'm, yeah, Technically, yeah. we've been talking about TikTok since the the latter part of, or the middle part of uh, last year, right? Last year, when when was it? when did when did uh, For a couple years. when did uh, uh, forty five get kicked out of office? Last year, was it last year? It was yeah, last, last year. year. Okay, so ever since the the buzz was TikTok was going to be kicked out of the United States, and yeah, then had, that's right. Then, and then we had that's that great right. debate, and then. Biden comes in, that whole thing was cooled off. So mm -hmm. now TikTok, you know, we can TikTok, we can dance all we want <laughs> and people can share the kind of content that he's sharing. But uh -huh. people, I, I just want you to be realistic though. Yeah. He didn't share with you how long it took to make them videos. Okay. Yeah, that's, a, that's another thing. I'm telling now, you, it's a commitment. You are a small business owner, okay? Now, I don't know what that was. He was building in the middle of the floor. It looked like a moat. But <laughs> it was cute, whatever it was. But you still have to build, create the content. This perception that you can just hop on a social media platform, mm -hmm. post some content, and it's going to work for you. And here's the thing, too, is... I always tell my clients as well is don't rely, don't rely on social media to save your business. Ooh. I'm just saying like, I know there's a lot of success stories, but don't rely on any of these platforms to save your business. At the end of the day, it's about what's going on internally with your business that you can make better. And it's not about how you present yourself on social that's gonna save you. It's yeah, I am giving yeah. you applause in case you was one. Mm -hmm. I was like, what's that noise? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I always say it's not going to save your business. It's not. No, it's, it's not. And it's sustainable. I, I mean, is is success on in, or Instagram, I'm sorry, TikTok, is it sustainable for your business? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you hit that virality, is it sustainable for you? Well, here's the thing. Viral is just that. You're viral yeah. for a minute. For a minute. A minute. Your and then 15, it. 10 seconds of fame. Or it might, you, you know what? You might even get three days to a week or so. And then, you know, after your peak, you know, people may mm -hmm. come back, you know, periodically, that kind of thing. 
But at the end of the day, it's like a one hit wonder. Yeah. Yeah. So my biggest thing is just being realistic. I, I do I do believe there are some benefits to being on TikTok, especially for product based companies, you know, showing how your product is made or how it is used by consumers. Um, a lot of user generated content. I'm sure you can work with influencers to create content for you. So there are opportunities there, but it, it, it's just a commitment. And, you know, yeah. I wouldn't want to sell a dream to anybody. That's either. true too. That's very true too. So, it's realistic. So with YouTube, if you, well, here's the caveat. If you are a YouTube partner, are you a YouTube partner? Because here's the thing. We're good at telling you, hey, mm -hmm. there's a new feature coming out. Hey, there's a new this coming out. But we don't tell you, this ain't free. This don't apply to you. <laughs> this does not apply to you because at the end of the day, this new great new feature, you got to have 10,000 followers. Or you got to have 10,000, you know, subscribers or something. This one requires you be a YouTube partner, which means you got to have at least a thousand subscribers. And I forgot mm -hmm. how many hours of, uh, of views or whatever it's supposed to be. Four, it says 4,000 valid public watch hours in the last year. YouTube has now four ways, four ways to monetize. This new one is called Super Thanks, and it's the first feature that allows fans to tip creators on individual uploaded videos, not a live stream. So let's get that clear. It's not a live stream. This is just an uploaded, regular uploaded video. But again, you have to be a YouTube partner to take advantage of uh -huh. this. So <laughs> here's the thing. With super thanks, you can buy a, a preset amount, just like you can with the other tools, like the super chat and things of that nature. You can buy that. And then uh, you can leave a message. And when you leave a message, it will appear highlighted in the comments. So you can spend upwards, well not upwards, between $2 and $50 in whatever currency you have in your country. Mm -hmm. it's interesting how they're basically breaking this down but if it's another way for people to get paid for the things that they're doing i, I support it mm -hmm. and and as well as as a consumer who's watching the videos and it also helps in developing the relationship between the person who's creating it and the person who's watching so you know now that they're highlighted or they have some sort of badge you know now you know that so and so always watches your videos or they're always you know a part of your conversation that's a that's a, a another great way to build community on youtube as well now let's get down to the get down this is the part i really want to talk about not that i didn't want to talk about the other pieces people but this is this this i've been waiting to talk about <laughs> for two weeks <laughs> for two weeks for two weeks i've been talking about I've, I've been eager wanting to talk about something that i heard on the internet and I, for the life of me right now, like I said, I can't remember how I stumbled upon it. I just know I was, I, I ended up on the essence.com website. They're doing a campaign, uh, the campaign that's uh, helping uh, women mm -hmm. entrepreneurs build their brands and build their legacy, that type of thing. Okay. So I'm like, Oh, okay. This, this, let me, you know, this is cool. I'm not interested in, in applying or being a part of it, but you know, let's see how I can support or something or the other. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I got excited because I was like, oh, they have a whole section about, well, there's a social, the social media director is going to impart some wisdom to, I'm assuming they were the finalists in this campaign or in this competition or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I don't know her. Let's let's hear what the social media director has to say. Now, her name is Charisma. I do believe I'm pronouncing that right. 
So she's been the director of uh, social for 10 months at Essence. Okay, cool. She's the principal. She's been a, a publicist. Okay, cool. Uh, she's been a live event social media editor at Essence once again. And she's been a, a press manager. For uh, That sounds more like publicity type, marketing type thing. And uh, then what else? Communications associate. So she's got a strong... Uh, strong experiences, great experiences in media, marketing, PR. Okay, cool. And she got her education, as you can see there. She got more education than me because she has a yeah. master's in public administration. Okay. She got a degree. She got her education. And I want to give her her props on all of that. But when it comes down to this particular thing, Mm-hmm. When, it ta- when she gave some information to these people that were in this campaign that Essence was doing. And like I said, uh, I take nothing away from her. I just disagree with mm-hmm. some of the advice she had to share. So I want y'all to see this. And today, I hope that these tips will really help you grow your business through social and really hone into some of those little kept secrets that can help you transform your business and your coins into major figures. So number one, you have to be consistent, ladies. Whether you're posting once every day, twice every day, once a week, it should be consistent so that your followers and your audience know what they can expect from you. And number two, Let's use all social platforms. So even if you feel like Twitter is the best platform and you have the most followers on there, you definitely wanna hone in on that or LinkedIn, but you wanna use all the platforms, even if you don't know how to use it yet. Number three, invest in your social media. That means if you have to hire someone to manage your social, do so. A lot of us use social media in our personal lives, so we think that we can passively manage social accounts for our businesses. Mm -mm -mm. Number four, push on those networks that really work well. If Instagram is going crazy for you, keep going in on Instagram. Take advantage of the opportunity. My mom used to always say to me, love who loves you. This is one of those situations. If Instagram loves you, love it back. My number five tool. Listen, all of your content will not be popular, but you still need to post it. Those things, some of those content pieces that you know aren't gonna drive up all of the likes, right? Still post them. Whatever is important to you, you need to make sure you're posting on social media. Instagram or any of these social platforms, they tell a whole story. It's not just the one story for the one day. This is gonna compile your entire story, almost like a scrapbook. Some days, if you wanna tell a story that just means something to your business, and you don't know how it's gonna perform, still tell those stories, because guess what? One day a client might come and they're looking through and that may be the one thing that resonates with them, right? So tell the stories that matter to you. It may not be popular, but it helps to build a foundation for your company. That's an amazing tip. (laughs) Thank Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the gist of it. Now, the positive. Number five was my favorite out of all of that. I like that, but she had to say Mm -hmm. uh, regarding, you know, some stuff you're going to post and it's not going to hit. That's realistic. Yeah. But you keep doing. I like the consistency. Mm -hmm. And the consistency. That was good. Yeah. Two and four was somewhat the same to a degree. Now, here's where I got a problem. When she said, be on all the social media platforms. No. No matter. <laughs> you could even, you could even wait. No. <laughs> you, no. you said, be on all the social media platforms, even though you're not on it, it's new to you, be on it. Yeah. Here's the thing, people. And I know a lot of y'all will probably watch the replay because this is take two because the internet dropped. I want you to understand something. I take nothing 
away from charisma, DeBerry. Absolutely. So don't even come at me with the bull, okay? Because I know some of y'all like to create some drama that has none. You won't get no drama from me, okay? That's one. Two. So let's just get that out the way. Two. There are some things that I probably will say that people don't agree with too. Understand that. I get it. But when it comes down to telling young, old, or whatever else people that hope to use social media to bolster their presence online or whatever else, they're doing it for business, and you tell them you got to be on all the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Nah, because here's why. Here's why I, I wholeheartedly agree, disagree with that piece. One, your target market is not there. Now that might benefit Essence being on all the platforms talking about this, this, this campaign or whatever they're doing about build your legacy. Mm -hmm. That might help out Essence being on all the platforms talking about Essence. But as a small business owner, solopreneur, I'm trying to tell you, you do not, I repeat, you do not need to be on all the social media platforms. Now she backed that up with focus on those that love you. If you're getting good traction on Instagram, hone in on Instagram. If she had just stopped there, I'd have been like, yep. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Yeah. I always tell people, I say, no, you do not need to be on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Pinterest, Snapchat. You don't need to be everywhere. Like you're just saying, your audience may not even be there. It depend depending on what you're selling, or you know, you have to think about market research. You need to do market research. Who's buying your stuff? What is the age group? Okay, if they're 25 to 34, 44, whatever, Instagram is going to be good for you, depending on where you're at or what mm -hmm. business you're in. But you don't need to be everywhere, essentially. Um, one, it takes too much time to create content for every channel because every channel has different formatting. Uh, what works on Instagram may not work on Twitter. So you're going to have to recreate that. So it fits the Twitter specs that takes time, uh, developing a content strategy for each channel takes time. So for her to say you need to be everywhere. I personally do not think that is good advice. I'm not, I'm personally not everywhere. Um, I don't tell my clients they need to be everywhere. I say, we're going to pick about three channels and we're going to hone in on that. Mm -hmm. That's doable for me. That's doable for you. And that makes sense. We don't need to be on seven. It's just overload at the time. And, and then when people want to talk about, well, you know, the Gary V's of the world do it. He has a team. <laughs> He has a team of people who create content for him. You, and I know he preaches about being everywhere. I know he does. That part, and I don't agree with that because if you're a solopreneur, entrepreneur with two people on your team, one person on your team, you have a business to run. You don't have time to be running social. Now, that's where I also agree with her um, advocating for outsourcing someone to manage your social, which is something that I do. I help specifically too. a lot of public figures and entrepreneurs have come to me and said, I need someone to manage my social. I don't know what I'm doing. That is where it makes sense to outsource and have someone manage your stuff, but to be everywhere is not realistic because then you're just going to start putting crap online and no one wants to see blurry pictures and, you know, content that looks like you didn't really put your time into it. Okay. And here's another piece to that. If indeed you're putting everything everywhere, why do I need to follow you three other places when I already know you're going to put it one place? That too. You're not, you're not even going to change it up. you just going to... Yeah, what am I getting gonna, on YouTube? You're going to machine gun it all over yeah. the place. Yeah. There's no need for me to follow you elsewhere because your messaging, your nothing changes. Right. And this is where, you know, it's good to... To, to at least let, let your audience know that if you're going to be on different platforms, maybe outlining, this is what you're going to get on each platform, right? So on Instagram, you might get some tips and tricks. Okay. On YouTube, I'm going to dive a little deeper. It's going to be 30 minute videos that we're going to do every week. 
now you have an audience that's like, okay, cool. So I know what to expect when I go on these channels. I'm not going to get this, like what, what you're saying, right? I'm not going to get the same type of content everywhere. It's going to be a little mm -hmm. bit different. Twitter, you might get more article features from me, a little bit more of conversation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you don't need to be everywhere. It's especially as a small business owner, it's too much time is dedicated to social media and you're better off hiring somebody as a freelancer to help you figure out where you need to be. Yeah. Cause I know somebody be like, well, but you stream it to three different platforms. Indeed I am. And here's why <laughs> one Facebook is where this baby started. Okay. Let's, let's keep it a hundred. Facebook is where the party started. YouTube is my backup. Okay. So I'm streaming to YouTube, but I'm also streaming to YouTube because search. I have a reason for that. Search. Google owns YouTube. YouTube is the number one search engine in the world. Google is number one. YouTube is number two, the search engine. Okay. Not to mention, like I said, it's my backup. You know how big these video files are when you finish live streaming? They're huge. <laughs> yeah. So YouTube is my backup as well as I'm taking advantage of search for optimization. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I doing on Twitter with this same video? I'm exploring using more video on Twitter because you know what? Twitter has live streaming capabilities. Indeed it does. Yeah. They don't push them for whatever reason, but I spend a good majority of my time for my business on Twitter. That's where I met Cody. That's where mm -hmm. I met a lot of other live streamers. Okay. So I'm testing. So it's, oh, if she had just said, you know, test, you know, you don't Strategize. have to, yeah, yeah, just see what it's like. Do your research. Yeah. I'd have been cool with it, but to tell them flat out, be on all the social media platforms. Yeah. People, people get burnt out. And that's why people get so disillusioned with us as social media managers. Cause we, get, <laughs> cause we get, let me, I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you. Here's a, uh, social confessions of a social media manager. <laughs> <laughs> New series. <laughs> New series. Confessions of a social media manager. We get burnout. Okay. Yeah. And there's only so much knowledge that your brain can potentially hold at one particular time. Now, mm -hmm. keep in mind, too, we're expected to know every blessed thing. Well, I want to do Clubhouse. Well, I want to be on. I want to, because now we have to include social audio. So now, not only do I have to know the major platforms and all their features yep, and advertising because I got to know how to do a Facebook ad, got to know how to do an Instagram ad. So the role of social media manager has changed. And if you're doing it by yourself, I hear it all the time. The overwhelm is real. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what you do not want is an overwhelmed social media manager. And right. you, as a business, you'll be the first to say, I did this. It doesn't work. Cause you hear that a lot. Oh, I was on such and such and such, and such doesn't work. It works. But what happened you is you listened to somebody that told you, you need to be everywhere. And now you spread yourself so thin. Mm -hmm. You're not getting mm -hmm. any results. And that's the thing too, is things like advice like that, if you want to call it advice, um, does put a lot of us in a bad light. You know, mm -hmm. I've had this conversation like with my dad and with um, business owners. Oh, I've tried this. I've done this. It doesn't work. I've hired an agency. They didn't perform. I hired a so-and-so they didn't do this. I'm like, okay, well, number one, what did they tell you? And it's things like this where it's like, well, they told me to be here everywhere and I'm not getting results. That's the problem is we have social media people going around saying you need to do all these little tips and tricks and tactics and this and that, and it doesn't work. So that's where, you know, I like to differentiate myself for the most part and being, I'm, I'm a strategist. I'm like, I'm going to tell you straight up, you being on Snapchat don't make sense. All right. It doesn't make sense for your business. It doesn't make sense for you. And 
again, when it comes to social media management, it takes a team. So if I'm working with you, we both got to collaborate on content. Mm -hmm. And that's like, if you're, if you're a business owner doing your own thing, think about, you have to create the content. You got to edit the content. Then you got to put it up on seven platforms. No. Oh, and then you got to do a podcast. And then you oh, got- Oh, yeah, and then a newsletter. You got to, no, no, no. To top it off, you got to do a newsletter. That's like the big thing. I'm, I'm coming out with a newsletter. I, I don't want to read the newsletter. You got to have a I'm newsletter. Sorry. You got to have a blog. Then you got to have a podcast. It's a lot. Oh, it's a and lot. Then, then you got to have a club on Clubhouse. It's a lot. It's too much. So I, I like to say, pick your three, your three, the trifecta that you can really commit to and and do that. If you're not comfortable being on three, pick one. one. I had a client who we just, I just managed her Instagrams. That was it, just Instagram. We saw 300% growth in followers mm-hmm. in three months that I worked with her because of consistency, because we were both collaborative on it. It's one channel we can really dedicate our time to growing there. She already had a lot of followers, but, and she's well known, but, but regardless, pick at least two to three and stick with that. That's, that's what I like to say and be consistent, Mm -hmm. not seven. You don't need to be everywhere. You do not need to be everywhere. So I I think y'all, for those of you watching, you got the gist of it. That's a wrap. People, please be safe out here in these mean streets. Um, I know everybody wants to, you know, get back to whatever their version of norm is, but I want you to live long enough to come back to the show. <laughs> so this is a selfish request. Be careful out here in these streets, okay? So come back next week, same time, same place, same fan page, same YouTube channel, same wherever you're watching it. And uh, have a good weekend. Bye. Me? Oh, any? I'm sorry. Any parting words, Cody? Oh no, no. Oh, oh, um... oh. oh. Tell people how to reach you. Tell people. Um... Oh, yeah, sure. So you can follow me on Twitter at Kodisha, C O D I S H double A. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm on Instagram, same name, Kodisha. Find me on LinkedIn, look up Cody Yancy Johnson. I'm on there. I'm not going to share my Facebook. You don't need to there. Um, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs>